Hi, this is the Tropical Tidbit for Monday, September 9th. We're seeing a new tropical storm developing in the western Gulf of Mexico. As of this recording, the National Hurricane Center has just named this system Tropical Storm Francine. They initiated advisories yesterday before it had developed, but it is now a bona fide tropical storm. This was born out of two different weather features. One was this old cold front draped across the northern Gulf of Mexico. There was an area of low pressure along its south side that kind of slipped southward along with some of the cool air that ran down the western coast of the Gulf. And we also had a tropical wave axis which came across the Yucatan Peninsula and got itself involved in this area. And so the two have now congealed into a broader area of circulation within the deep moisture and tropical air mass of the southern Gulf of Mexico. We see a nearly symmetric area of deep thunderstorms near the area where the storm is centered and we're seeing the organizing process of this vortex come together today. This is the aircraft reconnaissance mission from the U.S. Air Force currently flying through the storm and on its first pass it came through like this and you can see that there were southeasterly wind barbs here and then they switched to northwesterly and so there was an indication that a circulation had closed off right about there but you could see that the strongest winds were located well away from the center a little closer on the northeastern side but in general the center uh, was rather a broad circulation with the cooler ribbon of airflow down on the south side being the strongest winds of up to 50 miles per hour that the plane has measured and the plane is also catching Francine during its initial organizing and vertical alignment phase. And so what that means is this initial location here, if you look at the visible satellite loop, that location was located kind of down here in the southeastern side of this broader mass of deep thunderstorms. And the mid-level circulation center is somewhere up here, closer to where the deep cauliflower cumulonimbus tops are located. But when the plane went through the center again, you'll see it came back around and then it moved through the center one more time. And you can see where it's located now, just as of this recording, the new circulation center has jumped quite a substantial amount just between passes an hour and a half apart. And this may be the beginnings of vertical alignment, where if you now look at where this location is on the visible satellite animation, that is actually up in here, closer to where that mid-level center is. And this is likely the location where the storm is likely to consolidate. So it's still moving around a little bit as this area becomes a little bit more organized under the hood. For the moment, it's probably still a broad circulation, perhaps with multiple areas of rotation underneath here, but it is getting organized as it starts to move towards the northwest and eventually toward the north. Now over the next couple of days, the track forecast for this storm is fortunately rather straightforward. The, the biggest uncertainty right now is this initial location where the storm consolidates and actually has a defined spot where the circulation is focused. But as soon as we get that, the track is rather straightforward. This is the European model showing the mid-level atmospheric flow, and there's a ridge axis right over the Florida Straits. So you'll see the flow doing this in the mid-levels and crossing Florida out of the west. And this storm right here is simply going to move around the edge of this ridge. So it's going to come towards the Rio Grande Valley and then turn towards the northeast, eventually ending up somewhere in the north central Gulf Coast, likely Louisiana based on most model expectations right now. And you can see that on the larger visible satellite loop, again, we have this cold front and this is a thermal contrast. There is cooler and dry air over the Gulf states and there's warm tropical air to the south where the storm is currently developing. That thermal contrast means there is vertical shear here and you'll see that in the upper levels there is a strong jet of westerly flow over Texas, Louisiana and the U.S. south. And this is going to stay that way for a while. So as this storm starts to move northward, it's going to be in favorable conditions for the moment, for the next day or day and a half. And then after Tuesday evening or so, it's going to start running into this belt of strong flow aloft. And so the forecast for this is a storm that moves north and then northeast and then interacts with this jet and wind shear starts to increase. So in terms of the intensity forecast, this is going to be a relatively straightforward system with favorable conditions that intensifies for the next day or two. And then on its approach to landfall, conditions start to get less favorable very quickly. If we look at how the European model shows the structure evolving in response to this, you'll see the organization phase over the next day or so. And by the time it ends up southeast of the Rio Grande Valley on Tuesday morning, Tuesday afternoon, 
you can see a relatively symmetric moisture signature here with a deep green distributed all the way around the circulation, indicating a healthy structure. The storm is intensifying at this point and uh, could be approaching hurricane strength even as it moves into the northwestern Gulf of Mexico. But then immediately upon entering the westerly flow near the Gulf Coast, the European model sees the shear causing asymmetries in the circulation with most of the moisture being pushed off to the northeast. You see dry brown colors showing up on the southwest side. And while intensification does continue for a little while toward the coast, eventually weakening begins instead because the shear is now too strong. Most models agree that shear will quickly spike above about 30 knots out of the west or southwest as the storm is approaching landfall in Louisiana. And this is stark enough that it would likely halt any intensification trend around the time of landfall. But therein lies the uncertainty is exactly when that halt occurs. Typically when shear begins over a storm, it takes a little bit of time for it to fully respond. So right now models are saying there will be about 18 hours of hostile shear to the storm prior to it crossing the coastline. That's likely enough for it to halt the intensification trend, but it may not be enough time to cause the storm to appreciably weaken. And for that reason, it seems likely to make landfall near or just below its peak intensity. And so that's the key as this comes toward the Gulf Coast. If you look at the GFS, we'll see a slightly different opinion to the European model where it's, it hangs together in the face of the shear a little bit longer. So you'll see that symmetric moisture signature hanging on right until the last moment and only at landfall do you see the dry air really cut into the core of the storm as late as six hours before landfall you still see that green ring and this is a hurricane strength system on the gfs whereas on the european model you see a little bit more of an asymmetric signature and you'll see some variability in the model guidance here even on the european model if i look at the previous run you'll see how much stronger it was and how the current run is weaker that's some of the run-to-run -run variance here, and that's the uncertainty and the intensity based on how long the inner core of this storm holds together. If we look at the HAFS B model from NOAA, we'll see kind of a depiction of how the high-resolution model guidance views the structure. Uh, in 36 hours on Tuesday afternoon, this is the Texas-Mexico border right here, Rio Grande Valley, and you can see that Francine is centered just to the east of that area and there's a closed ring. This is a simulated radar depiction showing a closed ring indicating an inner core and an eye wall forming. And this is a storm that's nearing hurricane strength at that time. You'll see as it moves towards the Northeast, it continues to hold on to that inner core structure. So we get intensification to a category two hurricane as the storm moves toward the coast, but eventually it starts running into the high shear and you start to see the asymmetries. And so by the time of landfall, the southern eyewall has basically eroded because there's southwesterly shear here, and that typically leads to only the northern eyewall remaining. And so you can see the intensification trend does get halted before landfall on this model, but not before this becomes a bona fide hurricane and potentially a category two hurricane with winds approaching 100 miles an hour. So that's kind of the, the situation we're in, a storm that's likely to become a hurricane at some point unlikely to become a major hurricane just because it will run into hostile conditions before landfall, but a hurricane nonetheless likely moving toward Louisiana with landfall expected sometime on Wednesday afternoon or evening. This is the National Hurricane Center official forecast as of 10 a.m. Central Time here on Monday, showing that track towards the northwest and then turning towards the northeast and accelerating as it nears that mid-latitude jet stream. And you can see it becoming a hurricane on the official forecast by Tuesday evening. This is the zone where models show the most favorable conditions and where the inner core of the storm will likely have come together. So that's where the greatest intensification is likely. And then probably a leveling off or slight weakening on its way into the coastline. Right now, the Hurricane Center has a level intensity in the final hours before landfall with a peak here of about 85 mile per hour maximum winds. Of course, there is a range on that. In general, the expectation right now is probably a category one or two hurricane. That means winds of 75 to 110 miles per hour is kind of the range that should be prepared for. Hurricane Watch has been issued for most of southern Louisiana here with a broad swath of potential impacts as this comes northeastward. Tropical Storm Watch also for southern Texas and northeastern Mexico as Francine could get close enough to scrape that area over the next 24 to 36 hours. 
On the wind probability swath, you can see the most likely arrival time of tropical storm force winds, 40 miles per hour or stronger, is around Wednesday morning for Louisiana, of course, earlier on Tuesday if you're in Texas. But that's kind of the window of preparation time that you have is through Tuesday, but not later than that. With the 50-50 line here encroaching on southeastern Texas with some risk there as well for elevated winds and then most of southern Louisiana at risk for high winds. Storm surge as well over a broad swath of southern Louisiana likely to see high, level, high water level rises up to 5 to 10 feet on this forecast both west and east of Vermilion Bay with water level rises extending potentially as far east as even Mississippi and the Mississippi River Delta in southeastern Louisiana as the storm comes up from the south. Storm surge prone area does not require a major hurricane to have a big surge event, so please be careful and prepared if you're in evacuation zone for that storm surge. There will also be flash flooding risk extending through most of Louisiana and then on inland into the southern U.S., as Francine moves towards the northeast and moves deep inland at a rather brisk pace over the next few days. And finally, a slight risk of tornadoes on the eastern side of the landfall track, also possible according to the Storm Prediction Center as those spiral bands rotate into the coastline. That's about it for this video. Please be prepared for Francine, especially if you're in evacuation zone due to flooding hazards as this comes northeast with landfall expected later in the day on Wednesday. I'll have another video update tomorrow morning. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.